A special ceremonial welcome for a special friend to Singapore. After the formalities, Indonesian President Joko Widodo and Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong discussed issues regarding three landmark agreements. These pertain to defence cooperation, the extradition of fugitives and airspace management. Both sides have also jointly applied for the International Civil Aviation Organization's approval on airspace management last week. We've taken a major step forward to resolve three long-standing issues. We are ready to break new ground in fresh areas of cooperation that are deep, multifaceted, forward-looking and mutually beneficial and will make a difference to future gen generations. Fifteen agreements were signed. These focused on emerging sectors like the digital economy, sustainability and human capital development. For instance, a program will be in place to allow young tech professionals from both sides to undergo work exchanges. Mr Lee adds that Singapore will support Mr Widodo's new Santara project and his vision for a green and smart city. Mr Widodo also expressed appreciation of Singapore's support for Indonesia's leadership in ASEAN. Menjaga persatuan dan sentralitas ASEAN sehingga tetap menjadi motor perdamaian dan stabilitas di kawasan dan menjadikan Asia Tenggara tetap menjadi pusat pertumbuhan ekonomi. Saya juga mengundang kontribusi Singapura pada ASEAN Indo-Pacific Forum yang akan diselenggarakan di September 2023. Despite progress with bilateral issues, there's still much to be done on the regional front. Both sides regret the lack of progress in the five-point consensus on the Myanmar situation. In 2021, a military coup had overthrown a democratically elected government. And so they say they will work closely with partners like the United Nations to push for a full implementation of the five-point consensus. The five points include ending violence and allowing ASEAN Special Envoy to meet all stakeholders in Myanmar. Still, PM Lee and President Widodo say the leader's retreat was fruitful and it'll likely be Mr Widodo's final retreat with Singapore as Indonesia heads to the polls next year. Singapore and Indonesia have signed a joint update on defence cooperation. It highlights key bilateral defence interactions in the past year and affirms the country's commitment to advance cooperation on key areas of mutual interest. Earlier, Singapore's defence minister hosted his Indonesian counterpart to breakfast. Dr Ng Eng Hen and Mr Prabowo Subianto exchanged views on geopolitical developments and discussed ways to work together for peace and security in the region. Dr Ng then met the Commander-in-Chief of the Indonesian National Defence Forces. They reaffirmed the country's close and long-standing defence relations. Admiral Yudo Margono is making his introductory visit to Singapore. He also met Chief of Defence Force Melvin Ong and inspected a guard of honour during his visit to the Defence Ministry. Singapore and Indonesia will deepen collaboration on renewable energy in the Riau Islands. Now, both sides are currently reviewing commercial proposals, which market players say could attract 50 billion Sing dollars of foreign direct investments into Indonesia and create tens of thousands of jobs. Now, the two countries signed a memorandum of understanding to develop solar farms for a start under what's called a Green Corridor Project. And when viable, hydrogen and ammonia as alternative energy sources. The green energy that's produced can be supplied to other regions in Indonesia or exported to Singapore. To do so, both sides will work to develop frameworks and transmission infrastructure to allow cross-border electricity trading. That's a move that could become a pathfinder for ASEAN. Cross-border electricity trade will create new growth opportunities for our companies open up further interconnections among Southeast Asian countries and contribute to the realization of the vision of an ASEAN power grid. And this will help to unlock our region's renewable energy potential, generate new investments in clean energy and contribute to our region's collective decarbonization. 